in normal condition, if the ECAM ND transfer selector is not set to normal, the lower ECAM display unit shows a green message indicating that the SDE image has replaced an ND image, as there is no reason to keep this configuration on. With the upper and the lower ECAM DUs available, we have restored the normal display for you. If the upper ECAM DU is blanked, the lower DU automatically shows the EWD image instead of the current SD image. As there is no caution message on the ECAM, you should refer to the QRH in order to find the related actions to do about that display unit failure. These actions are to turn off the affected DU and to use the ECAM ND transfer selector in order to recover a second DU for ECAM operation. This will replace the FSNDE image by the current SD image. If few minutes later, in an unlikely event, the lower ECAM DU is also blanked, the SD image, which has already replaced the FSNDE image, will show the EWD image. This image has priority when only one DU remains on for the ECAM operation. In this case the ECAM works in single display mode. In single display mode, to display a system, you have to press and hold the related key. If you hold down the key for more than three minutes or if you release it sooner, the EWD image gets back. In single display mode, if the ECAM detects a parameter that is near the limit, but is still in the green range, it will trigger an advisory message. But, as there is only one DU, you will be alerted by an ADEV caption, pulsing white on the EWD screen, and a related system key light flashing. These indications show which system is affected by the faulty parameter and must be manually displayed for analysis. We will do it for you. When the flashing key is pressed and held, the related system is displayed for analysis. When the key is released, the EWD image gets back, the key light goes off, and the advisory is cleared. In single display mode, if a more serious problem is detected, such as a hydraulic fault, the left side of the EWD image will show the related caution message and the right side, the corresponding affected system. In order to check the fault on the hydraulic page, the pilot non-flying has to press and hold the related key. Then, on pilot flying request, the related actions have to be done and the primary failure has to be cleared. So, the normal memos are back on the left side, but on the right side of the EWD, a start title is still displayed. In order to analyze this affected system, the pilot non-flying should press and hold the related system key. We did it for you. Then after releasing the key, and after confirmation from the pilot flying, the start title can be cleared. So, the status caption appears, to indicate that the status page must be selected to review it. So, we pressed and held the status key for you. After confirmation from the pilot flying, remove status. Then, ECAM actions complete. Note, in descent. The status page must be recalled manually, as the automatic display of this page does not work in single display mode. If, unfortunately it is one of those days, and the first office of PFD screen is blanked, notice that the PFD image replaces the ECAM image on the first officer MD screen because that image is more important.
Now, to display the NDE image on that single screen, you have to use the PFD ND transfer push button. Then to set back the ECAM ND transfer selector to normal, which switches off the ECAM display. Or to captain, in order to transfer the ECAM image on the captain's side. Now, you will be briefed about the use of the emergency cancel push button. It is normally used to cancel an intermittent nuisance caution message. It may be used, if necessary, to stop most of oral warnings. Let's look at an example of an intermittent nuisance caution message. As you confirm, it is a real nuisance. And the only possibility to stop it, is to lift the guard and then to press on the emergency console push button. We will do it for you. When the emergency console push button is pressed, the related caution message on top of the left side of the engine warning display is removed. So, to confirm it, a white message is displayed for a few seconds and the status caption appears at the bottom of the engine warning display as the white message has been transferred to the status page. Notice that the master caution lights are off. We have selected the status page for you. Notice that the white message is displayed on the left bottom part of the page. We have removed the status page for you. Now, if you just press on the recall key, the memo normal message is displayed for a few seconds as the ECAM alert has been cancelled for the related fault. Now, assume that the ILS2 fault is no longer present as confirmed on the status page. Notice that the ILS2 fault is still cancelled. So, to rearm the full ECAM detection and to clear the cancelled caution, the recall key must be pressed for more than 3 seconds. As we did it for you. All indications have returned to normal. If the stack 1 and 2 have failed, the data on system pages normally generated by the stacks are no longer available and shown by amber crosses. Only the data directly processed by the DMC will be still available on the systems listed on the engine warning display. Also, most of Amber cautions will be not received by the FWC from the LUS stack. After confirmation from the pilot flying, clear FWS. Notice that on the status page, an information message about the engine approach idle only may be displayed depending on the FWC version. If this message is displayed, you have to disregard it because the engine idle is not affected by the loss of both stacks. The master warning lights and the master caution lights are triggered by both flight warning computers, but independently. FWC1 will turn on the captain lights, as shown, and the first officer lights, as shown. FWC2 will turn on the captain lights, as shown, and the first officer lights, as shown. Notice that, in case of one FWC failure, the other FWC ensures all ECAM functions, but it will trigger only its part of the master warning and master caution push buttons. When both flight warning computers have failed, all alarms, oral and visual, are lost, as confirmed on the right side of the engine warning display. 
On the eCam control panel, only the system keyboard is available to monitor a related system. Notice that if a system is selected, the related key will be not lighted. Monitor also the overhead panel to detect a fault.